Oh, look at that. Zucchini Parmesan. With Italian sausage. Oh, oh. oh that's good. Look at that. Fresh from the garden. Well, it's that time of year again. Got to sharpen the saw and start focusing on the wood pile. Since we rely on the wood stove for heat, hot water, and most of the cooking throughout the cold months, an ample supply of seasoned wood is essential. But no worries there, my friends. We've got what we need. We cut these trees 16 months ago and stacked it here in four foot lengths. Now that it's good and dry, we'll take it back to the homestead, cut it stove length, and get her covered. Oh, it's a lot of work, all right, but we enjoy it. No need for a gym membership with this lifestyle, I can tell you that. <laughs> now looky there, I like the way that looks, but I like the looks of that even more. And that's a nice stack of wood right there. It'll serve us well. That big stack was, is now sawdust. Got it all cut up, stove length. Just picked up another load. Well, folks, the second phase of the project is underway. <laughs> Been busy as ever. I'll show you what we got going on. All right, so over here on this side of the greenhouse and the workshop, when we built this last year, I said that there was going to be a chicken coop on this side. The plan was going to have a sloping shed roof coming down from there. And there was going to be, it's coming out 8 foot by 12 foot. So it would be 6 by 8 coop and 6 by 8 covered pen. Well, those plans have changed. And now I'm coming out 16 foot. I've already got my piers in the ground here. Okay, there's three there, three there, a couple bumped out there. So I'll show you what changes I'm making. I put two piers out here, bumped out four foot past the wall. So right from about here is going to be a wall. And from here coming out eight foot, so it'll be almost eight foot by eight foot chicken coop. It'll be actually seven foot by eight right here. Will be chicken coop. And then on this side will be chicken pen, which is roughly eight foot by nine, give or take. When I built this, I put the chimney out the side because that is going to be encompassed inside the chicken coop. It's going to be protected so no hay or anything can get at it, okay? It's gonna be in a protective, screened-in spot, but the heat that radiates out of this, this doesn't get real hot, but it will radiate a little bit of heat, will keep the chicken coop at a nice temperature. That was my plan from the get-go, and when I had built this structure, I had said how I was going to recycle the heat from the wood stove, and that was my original plan. And then on the back here, I'm coming out here roughly nine or ten feet. I'm going to put three piers, and then there's going to be a shed roof coming down here. And I'm going to bring the grade up level with that crushed gravel there. And this is going to be a place where I'm going to park the tractor. It's really bothered me that the tractor has been out in the weather. You know, I cover it with a tarp in the winter, but I didn't have any choice. All right. We had a lot of projects to take care of when we moved here. And uh, we had to prioritize everything. But we've got all of those projects taken care of. And now I can get to the other projects. I'll tell you, that month off really set me back. But we're catching up. All right, you can see how the terrain just drops down here, okay? And I put the piers in, and I can only go down as far as ledge, 
and some of these are really only in the ground about 16 inches or so. So coming out level with this crushed gravel, well, and this stuff sets up like concrete, that'll make a nice base for all of these piers to sit in. Yeah. So here, once again, we're going to have 8 by 12 wood shed, and then the coop extends beyond the wall here. So we have a nice chicken coop and a covered pen. And then over here, the roof comes down, and I can pull my tractor in there. So this is going to be a nice little road coming down, all crushed gravel. It's going to turn, and I can drive right under there with the tractor. So little by little, folks, this whole homestead project is coming together. Yeah. Let's go on the other side, and I'll give you a little bit different view of how things are going to be. Yeah, so this is going to look pretty good when it's done, okay? So we have the garden here, all right? Everything's doing good there. This is going to be a nice driveway into access everything here. It's going to be fence coming out here till it reaches the corner of the woodshed. So we got uh, access to the woodshed, access to the chicken coop, solar panels on the roof there. I have a wood stove in the workshop when I just want to heat that. And we've got the one in the greenhouse when we need to heat that. And of course we can share the heat back and forth. In the winter time on a sunny day, I don't have to have the wood stove going in the greenhouse uh, after about 10 in the morning. Prior to 10 in the morning it needs to be heated, but on a sunny day, let the fire go out and it gets nice and it gets actually hot in there. Yeah, it's really awesome. Well, folks, in my last video, I was filming right about from here. And in the background over there, I have some solar panels and people saw them. <laughs> so the questions have been rolling in. A lot of folks that have been following the channel have heard me talk about solar in the future. And then they saw them and they're going, hey, what's up? <laughs> what's up? You haven't showed us the solar. Well, anyway, uh, most of you know I've had the solar panels in the box for probably a half a dozen years or better. Uh, they were going to go on my other cabin. And then when we decided to move here, I packed them up and brought them here to New Hampshire. And when we moved here, as you know, we were too heavily forested. There was no sun coming in. So we've got everything cleared out. We've got the garden now. And I said, screw it. We've got the sun. I'm going to set them up temporarily. And this is a very temporary setup. And I'll show you. So what I have here is my solar panels are set up in a very temporary situation. Um, before I get into how I built this, Let's backpedal a bit. Um, remember when I had showed you that I set up a laundry facility in that little shed? Well, let's go up there and I'll show you again. So here in the laundry shed, remember when I had set up the laundry system, it was an experiment and I had a tank elevated up here. I had built a stand for it and I put it up here with the intention of using gravity feed water down to the washing machine. I wasn't sure that that was going to work, so I screwed the whole stand together. That way, if I decided later on to make changes, I could just unscrew it all and not ruin the lumber, you know, by using a cat's paw and try and pull everything apart. And I'm glad I did that, <laughs> because the gravity feed didn't work. All right, I had to employ the pump, which I showed you in that video. I had used a 12-volt pump that I had that I salvaged out of an old camper. Again, that was only a cob job, temporary experiment situation. Then I found out, since I've got to use a pump, I don't need the elevated tank. So I came in here with my screw gun. I unscrewed everything that I had built, took the tank away, now I just have a 55 gallon drum there. I pump the water out of there straight to the washing machine and it works awesome. So I had all that wood <laughs> and I said, well, screw it. And that's what I did. I screwed it back together in a different configuration 
and I made the A-frame for the solar panels to sit on. I had to add a few more 2x4s to it. But they're even screwed together with the same sheetrock screws. <laughs> okay, so once I have this structure built, the solar panels are going to go on the roof. Now I know what you're going to say. Some of you are going to tell me, don't put them on the roof. Uh, it's going to be a mistake. Uh, I'm going to break my neck trying to get the snow off of them. But um, I've got that covered. Now this roof is going to come down and the eave is only going to be roughly uh, seven foot, you know, n not very high. And the solar panels are going to be right on the edge there and they're going to be very easily accessible and I have a plan so it's going to be very very easy for me to get right there and sweep the snow off uh, without climbing on the roof or any of that jazz so just give it some time and you'll see what I've got planned out for that but to have them on the ground I just don't have a really good place for them there's still going to be lots of work done out here uh, I'm going to be expanding this garden out the garden is going to be twice as big next year. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pines coming down. Another maple tree there is coming down. Um, I'm going to be running the ditch to run conduit up to the camp. So there's all kinds of stuff that's going to be going on out here. And I don't want the solar panels in harm's way. They're going to be right there and I can access them very easily. I could always put a pallet on the forks of the tractor, raise it right up to access the panels. I've got a lot of things planned for that. Because again, this is going to be a driveway. I want to be able to drive the tractor right up here to access the chicken coop and the greenhouse and everything else. I don't want anything in this path. Having no solar panels right up there, they're going to be out of harm's way and they get full sun all day long. We're going to be good. Yep, so once again, I have a plan and everything will go according to plan. Yes, sir. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss